What's up guys? Before we begin today's episode out in Boulder, Colorado, I want to give you a kind of a heads up as to why we hit some of those collections. We went to see the Shelby collection, we went to see uh, uh, the promo models, a lot of really great stuff. But especially the neat thing about Hobby DB is that it's not just a place where you can go and buy and sell and trade and all that kind of stuff. It is the world database for all things collectible. And every single one of these places that we went, those individuals are all having their collections scanned and uploaded into Hobby DB. So you can create your own page on that website and that way it's 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 kind of building itself. It's user generated. So it allows you to create a page and for you to be able to share your collection with other people and thus determine the value of a collection. So if you have a collection of die cast or a collection of anything, you can create a page, you can upload your stuff, and you can find out exactly what that collection is worth. You help the community by sharing what it is that you have. So if you want to go there, let's say you're collecting a certain kind of die cast or a promo model or anything, you know, model kits, things like that, you can search that thing and then you can find other people that have it and who have established their value and thus it will determine the value of your pieces. And be sure to watch all the way to the end of the episode because HobbyDB gave me this shirt to give away. Yeah, right there. It's kind of like a soccer jersey. That's cool. I think it's large. So someone is going to win that and it could be you. Let's get moving. Good morning, Christian. Hi. How are you this morning? Excellent. Did you sleep well? Yeah. After that epic dinner? Dinner was good. It was good. I'm going to call Vic. Uh, we are up and running. What was the name of that place? Chautauqua? Chautauqua. And do you know what year that was built? I think about 1910. Wow. Wow. It was a beautiful place. Incredible place. But we're not stopping there. Uh, today we got two interesting places that we're going. We got John in the back hanging out with us. What's up, buddy? So where, where are we going right now? So first we're going to see William at Auto Archives. Okay. Auto Archives is his life project where he's trying to get together every piece, every car book, car magazine, every racing manual, anything automotive. So automotive literature. That's right. And there's okay. about 300,000 pieces there already and he has his work cut out. You guys are insane, man. That is, that is collectability on an epic scale. It is. You know, I mean, it, it's one thing to be a collector, but he's almost a collector of information. Yes. Right? And of course, we love him because we are his digital arm. So everything that's in auto or archive yeah. will also be on Hobby TV. So you can see it at the leisure at your own home, yeah. or you can come to Denver and, and go to auto archives and spend weeks going yeah. through the archive. Wow, wow. And then later today, what are we doing after that? We then meet Bud Callett. Bud oh. is a member of Hobby TV. He's adding uh, his diecast collection. He has about 12,000 models. All right. Uh, we're going to see those. We're going to see his real one to one vehicle. Okay. And uh, he's also a big seller on the side. So. frame stuff because once you get downstairs there's no wall space <laughs> so this is this is my frame pictures area um. lots of people have diecast cars and car collections but I don't think I've ever seen anyone have an automotive literature collection uh, literally things like uh, every road track magazine that's ever been out um, there is so much stuff here this is a top secret location I don't even know what town we're in and we're not gonna say we're just in somewhere in Colorado. Uh, this is a spectacular collection. We're gonna to talk to the gentleman that has all this stuff, but let me show you guys around uh, a little bit of what's happening here.
otherwise known as Crazy Bill, I would call him. <laughs> uh, you have an, an unbelievable collection here. Thank you. Um, you know, most people, as I mentioned, have um, car collections in a variety of ways, from the full-size cars all the way to the toys and variations. But honestly, I've never seen anything have a, an automotive literature collection, but no. there's a specific reason why. Yeah, we're a, we're a, it grew out of my publishing business. I'm a book publisher, and we formed a non-profit auto archives library. And people can now donate material, which is great. Mm -hmm. They get the tax benefits, and we're, we're building a collection of material that's to be a, a hands-on library. Mm -hmm. I want people to come and use it, to pick it up, to uh, not to wear white gloves and, and yeah. wonder what they're looking at. It's to actually just come here and browse and sit down and have a coffee. Is it ultimately the goal to have a place where people can go and, and actually use this? Oh, very much, yeah. We have, we have 1,200 square feet here, but it's floor to ceiling, mm -hmm. Full totally, we have a hundred thousand or so items. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, our aim is to get a building where we can have a library, a coffee shop, a, yeah. a little movie cinema, screen some oh. of the movies we have, um, and let people come and access it. So we're looking for somewhere in this area mm -hmm. of Colorado. Long yeah. term, we want to collect. We'd like to collect everything. Yeah. Um, and digitize it all and put it all onto a, a partner we work with, Hobby DB. They, mm -hmm. They're great. They have a huge. Um, storage space on their website and but we're trying to work with with other libraries and, and partners to there's no point in me scanning material that yeah. other people have scanned so right. we just want to gather what we can yeah but you're not necessarily building a collection you're building a legacy you I, know I, it's, yeah yeah well, it's nice to leave you know a lot of this material is disappearing fast it's yeah. getting trashed by right. um, by people who just can't move it it's yeah. the volume the sheer volume and the weight of stuff is right it's crazy, that's why we're in a basement, not yeah. um, not upstairs in yeah. a building. So just on the wall here just happened to be a collection of 143rd scale McLaren models. Um, I did a book for McLaren cars in the UK, the Formula One team, and they asked me to collect um, a set of each car that's in the book. So if I show you my book, every one of these is photographed in the book. We'll donate a lot of material. Um, so this is a collection of club magazines. This is the um, smoke signals, the Pontiac Club. The collection here is newspapers. Um, mainly from the UK, Speed Sport News. The trouble with newspapers is they're so delicate they weren't intended to be kept for, yeah. for 50 years. So down here we have this collection of Austin Healy magazines that someone just donated. Word is getting out about the archive and how it's growing quickly. This is one of my um, prized possessions. This is the nose cone off of 1974 Formula One Lotus, John Player Special obviously. A friend of mine, uh, an acquaintance friend in the 70s, borrowed this actual car from Colin Chapman to compete in speed events in the UK. And I sat in the car when I was a kid, when I was 12 or something like that, 14. And I sat in the car and he dreamed of it. Um, and as my career progressed and I did books on publishing and photography, years later in, in 19, about 95, I got friends with the Chapman family and they had this car abandoned in a barn where they, they had Formula One cars they restored, but this one hadn't been done. And I, I dragged the car out, hadn't been moved for 20 years, dragged it out and sat in it. And that was, and a friend took a picture of me sat in it. At that moment was just great. Um, and I'd brokered a deal for my business partner at the time to buy the car and restore it. Um, and I got to drive it, about five years later I got to drive it, which was a great thing. So to actually drive that car was the culmination of a long life story of Lotus. So this is the major runs of, of um, so on the top shelf we've got Auto Week, then we've got Road and Track, then we've got the classic cars from the UK, Motorsport and Autosport from the UK. So these are complete runs, pretty much of those. People, as I say, donate, and they get the tax benefit, uh, which is really good. It works out well for people, rather than trashing stuff. And the, the realistic nature of trying to sell your collection of magazines these days is the value isn't really there. I guess you could say I've been pulling it to together since I was a teenager. Yeah. I mean, the first, you know, I, I kept everything when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Some of the newspapers and magazines I had when I was uh, a teenager, when I was 13 or 14, that yeah. they've traveled around the world with me. Yeah. Um, but from there on the publishing, the collection grew when I was publishing books and then I suddenly realised I've got all this material, what a waste, it's just sat here, nothing happens to it and it's, it's a, so we opened the, the non-profit to get people access mm -hmm. to come and look at it, also to grow the archive but now people can come, sit down, read it 
I mean, this is our office, but we have a little reading space around the corner here and a computer that people can come, pick stuff up, look at it. I want people to read it, yeah. to be enthusiastic about yeah. the collector car world. Right. Hidden in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> the bow is what makes it. <laughs> The, yep. bow, the bow was actually, sadly, it was on my daughter's car when we gave her her car for Christmas. <laughs> It's, it's really neat to be able to see someone um, that has such a, a focused passion as, uh, as he does. You can see not only that uh, what he has is extensive, but that it's actually very small compared to what there is, and that this is a, a lifetime yes. collection that he's building. Yes. You know, and, and to share that with everyone. Yeah, is very and then he's, he's starting putting a team together. We have a good board, uh, yeah. there's seven of us. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but the task is so big. Oh, it's big, yeah. Just digitizing what he has, yeah. which we help with. But it's guaranteed fun. It's like job security. Yes. You know, it's guaranteed fun. Every single day you get to wake up and you get to do that passion. And that's very cool. You met the team yesterday, or parts of it. Yeah, um, great team. And that's the, that's the inner team. That's the, you know, we are the the coaches, the uh, challenges. We're the people that, that get the site going and working. Mm -hmm. But really, the most important people are our volunteers. Yeah. Now yeah. we've got uh, we've got about 85 champions. Wow. Uh, we've got 400 curators who are responsible for one or more pages, and then we we have uh, 300,000 registered users. Uh, anyone that could have had some information, and it's those guys that really get the yeah. RBDB going. Yeah. It proves the point, and we talk about this a lot on the vlog, that how important it is to do what you love and to love what you do. It's hard to think about you know, leaving a job and going and doing what you love, and there's a way to transition into that. But life is short, man. You gotta get in there. Uh, you gotta find something that you love. And find a way to mold that into your life in some way, to do your passions, to turn your hobbies into your day-to-day. -day. And that's what these guys are doing, and they're doing a fantastic job. And speaking of passion, uh, now we're gonna head to the Haggerty offices. Um, and we had dinner with a guy named Derek last night, who's, uh, I guess, VP of those offices yes. here, in, here in Boulder, uh, or in somewhere in Colorado. Can't quite say. Don't have any idea where I am. There is some rumor of a McLaren there, so we're going to go check that out, and then we have another collection that we're going to do after that, so stick with us. can't be boring with that in there. <laughs> Holy crap. Do you want to start in there or? Well, like wherever, wherever you guys would prefer. Yeah. I want to see that. Do we get to take this out later? Yeah, we just drove it over, so it's cool. You liar. <laughs> <laughs> Is, uh, what's known commonly known as the head honcho here at um, Haggerty. Yeah. Right? Haggerty yeah. Insurance uh, for classic cars and all things classic cool like boats and a variety of different things. Race cars, yeah. motorcycles. Uh, it's an addiction. I don't know what to say. You know, uh, but behind us, we're in a, kind of a special room here. Yeah, right? this, this is what we refer to as our bow car room. Mm -hmm. We named it the bow car room because that was a famous race car that was actually built in. Denver, Colorado back in the 60s. You're working with Auto Archives and with HobbyDB also, right? Yeah, we're working with Auto Archives, HobbyDB. Mm -hmm. We're also a sponsor of the Diecast Hall of Fame. So cool, so cool. We're having so much fun out here. And uh, uh, we're not in Boulder. I don't know where we are. Somewhere in Colorado. We're in Golden, Colorado. Golden, Colorado. <laughs> okay, so we're going to walk around a little bit. There's a, uh, a fantastic uh, McLaren out there. Yeah, we have a yeah. cool McLaren race car parked yeah. in our lobby because that's what you have to do. And and why, you know, if someone has a classic car and they uh, want insurance and they obviously would know about Haggerty, but what, you know, for you guys, what's the your primary passion about insuring classic cars like this? It, the big passion for us is just keeping driving alive. Mm -hmm. You know, looking looking forward to the future and people are talking about, 
sitting in the back seat while somebody else, you know, a yeah. computer really pilots you around. We want to be sitting in the front seat holding on to the steering wheel. Yeah. That's yeah. the cool way to live. I, I think we're, at some point we're going to have to design a fake IP so that people can just kind of sit up there and pretend they're driving, you know, <laughs> with, a, with a little Haggerty sign right in front, you know. You know. Well, in 20 years, the question is going to be, hey, are you a driver? Yeah. Oh, are you a driver? Yeah. Um, where would people go if they want to know more about Haggerty? You can go to Haggerty.com. Okay. So, and check it out there. Okay. All right. Let's go look around. All right. right here, 1,300 pounds, uh, up to 540 horsepower. Yep. See how I just whipped that out? 28 of these builds, mm -hmm. they were campaigned in Europe. This, this one has a Chevy motor in it right now. It's just been completely redone. It's actually a local collection. Okay. And so what we do is we'll display the car mm -hmm. and then we'll actually hold celebrations around the car. So we'll do what's called the collector in the car, bring in the owner. And oh, nice. He shares the story about yeah. the car. So it's a little, little education, a little celebration. Yeah. And, it makes and that's fun. another collection we haven't seen yet, so we're going to come back and see that one too. But right now, I'm going to be giving the shirt away, which I mentioned. Here it is one more time. And the question is, in order to win this shirt and the stickers, tell me in the comments below what you thought was the best moment in the last three episodes, the last three vlogs that we did while we were out in Boulder. What was the most interesting thing that stood out for you? And the most interesting comment down below is going to win the shirt. That's it, people. We'll see you tomorrow.